Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, church in Capella. Glory of Christ Ministries. Bishop Herbert, Pastor Paul, the people of God, all the members and others that are listening, other churches around the world. It's a great time to be alive. Wouldn't you say? Amen. Now, what we talk about is this, that we acknowledge the Lord in us. We bless the Lord like I've seen your worship in Kapala. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You could see the difference of praise in Kapala and around the world. Now, there's different cultures, but the same God. There's different countries, but the same God. You see, God in us is God in us. It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit power. The same person, the Holy Spirit, that rose Christ from the dead, lives in us. That is the greatest miracle. And he had to. You see, when he was by Lazarus' tomb and Mary was there and Martha, Martha knew that he was going to do what he said he was going to do. But others said, you know, he's been in the tomb now four days. And Jesus was grieved. He wept. Not because he was sad that Lazarus or they didn't, you know, Lazarus was dead. He was sad because of the fact they did not believe. They couldn't. They couldn't believe. Why, Pastor Ron? Why couldn't they believe? Well, first of all, they did not have the Holy Spirit yet. You know, he wept when he saw their condition. I believe today in the church today, he is weeping, still grieving on the fact that they have not, we have not really went in depth on the righteousness of God. Today, I'm not going to jump up and down, run back and forth. As you see, I'm, I'm in a chair. I was asked by the Holy Spirit through your pastors to give you a word today. Remember, the word is the same here in the United States as it is anywhere else in the world. What you have in your hands, he will prosper. But he can't do that with condemnation. You know, Jesus, he who knew no sin, became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. Um, that scripture will be put up shortly. You see, that scripture there, I believe it's saying might because some don't realize, like the ones besides Lazarus' tomb, that they are the righteousness of God. They couldn't because of the fact they were not baptized in the Holy Spirit. They didn't have Paul's gospel at that point. <laughs> Paul was still trying to, to kill them. Amen. So Jesus knew that he needed to die and raise from the dead. He knew that he had to go. And he said it was better if I go. And it's better. Peter had a problem. Everyone had a problem with it because they were looking for a king here on earth. So Jesus took what we deserved and gave us what we didn't deserve. The righteousness of God. Righteousness in layman's term is right standing with God. That's what you have. That's the way, you, if you're focusing on what you have done wrong, which is called sin, if you are sin conscious, then you can't be 
righteous conscience. Whatever a man thinks in his heart, so is he. How do you get it from the heart out of the mouth? Remember that faith comes by hearing, by hearing, by hearing, by hearing the word of God. He said in his word, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now it's the truths that you know. It's the gospel message that you know. And as you focus on the word of God in Romans 12, 1 and 2, renewing your mind in the word of God on who you are, that you've been justified, just if I've never sinned. Do you still sin? Yes. Should you be focusing on it? I don't know. I think Jesus took all of that. He took every judgment from you. Every curse he took from you. Galatians 3.13 is curses is a man who hangs on the tree. And you can say this. Jesus took my curses and became a curse for me. He took the first half of Deuteronomy 28 into his body for us. And he gave us his righteousness. We have right standing with the King of Kings. Whatever proceeds out of your mouth, you will have. Renewing your mind in the word to where you want to go. Focusing and meditating, not on what the world's meditating on right now. Not, not the, the pandemic. There was a pandemic in Jesus' time. It was called leprosy. And um, we're not supposed to be focusing on that area. What we're supposed to be focusing on is our true identity in Christ. That is 2 Corinthians 5.17. Says that your old nature, your, your sinful nature has died. That was the flesh nature. You cannot chase the flesh. I mean, you cannot be in the flesh anymore because Romans 8, 1 says that you are walking in the spirit and the spirit of God lives on the inside of you, on inside of every born again believer. Amen. So we focus on that we have right standing with the King of Kings. That means we have relationship with him. Remember the road of Didymaeus. The boys were walking up the road and they were discussing what was how brutal it was with what happened to Jesus. And this man came alongside of them and we know who he is today. He was the son of God, but they but they were so focused on their problems that they forgot their visitation. And as they walked up the road, Jesus was listening to them. How many times are we walking the road and Jesus is right there with you? Because of all the problems or maybe the things that you have done wrong and, and, and you might have chased your flesh because you can't be in the flesh no more. You're not a sinner saved by grace. You are the righteousness of God, church. That's who you are. I'm honored to be in front of you today to tell you that. I know that my king, our king, is satisfied with this message. Is pointing out how righteous you are. Amen. In your spirit, you became just like Jesus when you asked him into your heart. That means his spirit wrapped around your spirit. You are one-third perfect. But what you need to do is you need to go to your connect groups. You need to go and learn what has happened to you inside of your born-again spirit. What changes has now happened? And you need to focus on those words. The righteousness of God. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17. I am a new creation. My old nature died. Behold, all things became new as soon as I received Jesus as Lord. I had an angel visit me down in Manhattan in front of Times Square Church. It was a very large church. I didn't know whose church this was at the point I was walking around. But he came up to me. And this angel, he was just a regular guy, but he had really, really blue eyes. And they were like fire. And he had this smile on his face that was from ear to ear with the joy of the Lord. He had a beard on. Amen. A white beard with white hair. He had a three-piece suit on. And it was a little soiled. And as his shoes, he would walk up the street and scuff, his feet was scuffling in the back. And he walked up and he said, Think of things in heaven, not on earth. And he said it again. Think of things in heaven, not on earth. And I looked at my friend and I wonder what he, my friend jumps behind me. And because the power of God, it was so beautiful to be in the presence of God. Because now I, I was always in the presence of God, but I was walking on that road of Didymaeus. I, I forgot that I was with Jesus. <laughs> I came off a 90-day fast. I was at, man, it was just an awesome time in 2008. And he said it one more time, the third time. You know what he said? He said, think of things in heaven, not on earth. And I looked at my friend. He looked at me. He started walking away, went into the middle of the street, and poof, he was gone. I said, what did that mean? Think of things in heaven, not on earth. I, I couldn't understand what that meant. He wanted me to focus on every good thing that's already in me. Philemon 6. He has deposited the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. He wanted me to think of that, not of, you know, the days of Noah, how people are dressing, the seductions that are out there, the, the things that creep at night, the pandemic, the lack of supplies. He wanted me to think like the things in heaven to bring them out of heaven. And I started to think about that. It took me years to realize that I could speak what I can have. That if I let the seed and the word of God renew my mind in Romans 12. Romans is a, such a great book on salvation. Open it up. Read Romans 8. That's who you are. You walk in the Spirit. You are filled with the power of God. It's you are called to the ministry. Pastor Herbert and Pastor Paul are perfecting you for your calling, whether it's a businessman, whether it's a banker or someone that's creating cryptocurrency. Don't grow weary in well-doing. In due time, you shall reap the reward. And the ones that faint are the ones that do not mirror in the word of God who they are. You're just like Jesus is. I visited you back in 2018. I saw great miracles happen around you. And I know that God is saying he is, of course, he's not done with you yet. Things might seem gloom and bleak, like things are not going to work out, that people are dying around you. I would say, put Psalms 91 on your doorpost from here to here and renew your mind to Psalms 91. For no deadly plague shall enter your dwelling. You know what I came in your country. What I had to take 
was a yellow fever shot. <laughs> you know what I said when I was in Tebby Airport, gave him my money to come and to speak to you? I, I really did not want the shot. I was figuring out maybe I can have someone fly me in because I really didn't want the shot and come under the radar. But the Holy Spirit reminded me that I was his righteousness, that I have right standing with him, that Psalms 91, that I could see 10,000 fall, even a thousand in my right hand, but it will not come nigh close to your dwelling place. When you see these things happen, look up. Amen. We understand it's the, like the days of Noah. So, when I walked in to the airport, I saw in the distance Pastor Herbert and beautiful, his beautiful wife, your beautiful First Lady of Gloria Christ Church. Irene, and the children. Amen. That's, that's right standing with God. That's what they're teaching the children. Amen. Some of the kids, it's good to be on an island today because what they're teaching out there is abomination. You see, the word righteousness has become a religious cliché that has lost its meaning to many. Amen. To many Christians and many people. Even Christians are confused about what righteousness is and how to receive it. <laughs> that has left our society without a clear understanding of what it takes to have a relationship with God. This is a reflection of our nation's moral collapse around the world. It's imperative that we get back to the basics of righteousness. Say this. You must believe to receive. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm sure that the Holy Spirit is igniting something inside of you. Your level of learning and relationship with him will bring you to new understanding. When I was in Kampala, that's what I seen. I seen a nation that's going to fool other nations. That's what God says. There's a prophecy that came out of the church in Kampala, Gloria Christ Church, that, that you have just begun to see the things that you have already seen. Amen. You're going to see these things appear because some are confessing it and speaking. Some know who they are in the spirit. Remember Romans 8 is such a staple to your walk with God. You are no longer chasing the flesh. You can, you, you can chase the flesh. You're no longer in the flesh. You are the righteousness of the of God. Your spirit is brand new, it says in 2 Corinthians 5 17, for the ones that want to focus on what the Holy Spirit is saying here. This is how I acquire things. This is how I ended up in Kapala, on the beautiful island in Lake Victoria. This is how churches opened in Pakistan. This is how your pastor Herbert a man has made a clinic. <laughs> he had a stethoscope, remember? He started confessing clinic. He started confessing. You know, Pastor Paul and him came to an agreement. And Simon. <laughs> Amen. And then the believers, the disciples that are there. Listen to your teachers. Go to your connect groups. Find a place Physically where you can go and be a part and listen. That's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, be still, Ron. And I didn't understand what that meant, Psalms 46. Then, and know that I am God. Sometimes 
all the time that I have to be still when I'm with him, when I'm speaking the word of God. There's gifts of the Holy Spirit that some of you need to acquire. And it's very simple to receive from God. First, you need to hear the word being preached, spoken, teach to you. The gospel. The gospel will change your life. Amen. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But Ron, I, Pastor Ron, I was baptized once in the Catholic Church and they baptized me as a child and sprinkled water on my head. Yeah, that was a dedication. Baptism, we have, it, we have pamphlets on the baptism. And Pastor will explain that to you. The ones that come online and visit us and see us on Sunday or five days a week, understand the baptism of water, between the baptism of the water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit today because if you don't have it, you'll make it to heaven with a little smoke coming off the top of your head. That means these, these days that are wicked, that come upon people and take their lives there, they perish for lack of knowledge. The Lord says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. He says, if you grab knowledge and understanding, you'll have what Matthew 6.33 says. When you first seek the kingdom of God, here's that word again, and his righteousness. All these other things will be added onto you. Life, peace, joy. Inside your spirit, your born again spirit, when you received Jesus, you received salvation. You were saved from the wrath to come on the ones that are the children of disobedience that don't have Jesus as their Lord and asked them to come into their life. That's what you have done. And if you have not, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So call upon his name. Right now. Stand right where you're at. Stand up. And raise your hands. Everyone stand. And raise your hands to heaven. And say this. Jesus. Save me. Save me from this precious present time. Come into my life. Thank you that you have come to live in my heart. Whoever has repeated that prayer, come forward and let the staff, the people of God, the ones, the disciples of Christ up in front, Pray with you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then get connected in a group. Come forward. Yes, come forward. 